तो शुरुआत के डेढ़ से दो साल मैंने यूट्यूब से एक रुपए नहीं कमाया आई सोल्ड फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिस कंपनी फॉर एट लैक रुपीज दैट्स हाउ लेंस कार्ड वॉज बॉर्न यू नो एक्चुअली इट वॉज द गराज ऑफ वेर आई एम सिटिंग एंड स्पीकिंग राइट नाउ इज इट स्टार्टिंग अप इन इंडिया इज डिफिकल्ट एंड इट्स डिफिकल्ट एवरीवेयर इन द वर्ल्ड बट इट्स स्पेशली डिफिकल्ट इन इंडिया वेर फैमिलीज आर स्टिल वेरी मच कीन टू सी देर चाउ परसुइंग इंजीनियरिंग एंड गेटिंग अ कम्फर्टेबल पैकेज एट अ मल्टी नेशनल और बिकमिंग अ डॉक्टर और गेटिंग अ सेफ गवर्नमेंट जॉब एंड दैट इज चेंजिंग नाउ अ लिटल बिट इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री विद शोज लाइक शार्क टैंक इंडिया Yeah, popularizing the concept of startups and making them more socially acceptable but founders are still very much a rare breed in India and each one of them has a story of how they overcame hardship even when the cards were stacked against them and so in today's video i want to introduce you to 10 of those entrepreneurs 10 of the most inspiring popular indian startup founders that young people in india can look up to okay so starting off with the first founder on this list we have one of the co-founders and the ceo of zerodha nitin kamath so at the age of 17 nitin fell in love with the idea of making money quickly and started trading stocks. But then at the turn of the century came the dot com bust and so all of the money that he had made was lost within a week and he ended up in huge debt. This experience forced him to get a job at a call center where he was barely making 8000 rupees per month, but despite going broke, he decided to get back into trading and he learned from his past experience so that in 2008 when the global markets were crashing, Nitin ended up making a killing. By 2009, he had saved up 1.7 crore rupees and he used that money to start Zerota in 2010 with the vision of fixing India's 150-year-old stockbroking industry and the rest is history. Today Zerota is profitable, they're bootstrapped and because they're bootstrapped we don't have an official valuation, but they're definitely worth more than a billion dollars making them a unicorn. All right, now let's move on to the next founder in this list, founder and CEO of EdTech Unicorn, Physicswala Alok Bande. Alok's life started off pretty difficult. When he was in the 6th standard, his father had to sell their house to make ends meet after losing his job and so by the 8th standard, Alok had started taking tuitions to support his family but to his surprise he actually really enjoyed teaching in fact he even quit his engineering to start a youtube channel in 2014 and when he did this he actually had no idea that he could make money from youtube and serious money all he had was a phone camera a cheap mic and a whiteboard and a vision of making education accessible to people in india it took him one and a half years just to make his first 8000 rupees from youtube but alok kept on pursuing his vision relentlessly because his students really loved him by 2020 his youtube channel Channel Physics while well, it turned into a proper startup and today while other edtech companies are struggling just to survive Physics Walla well, is actually one of the rare profitable startups in this category that is thriving So the next entrepreneur on this list is the founder of shadi.com Anupam Mittal. Anupam's father was a self-made businessman and so business was a part of his daily life growing up. But here's the thing, Anupam didn't want to get into the family business. He wanted to start something of his own and he was unsuccessful in doing so in India and so he went to the United States where he ended up working with a dot-com startup MicroStrategy in 1998. And remember too that this is just a couple of years after public internet first came to India. And so while he was in the United States, Anupam realized the potential of internet businesses and made millions of dollars in stock options. By 1999, he had started his own website development business, Satyanet Solutions and sagai.com while still working at MicroStrategy, but then in the 2000.com bust, Anupam's wealth disappeared overnight and he was left with pretty much nothing. And he did still stay in the United States for another 2 years to make some money back, but by this time his business, sagai.com, was actually starting to do really well because NRIs were using it to get married. Then though, he took a big risk. He turned sagai.com into shadi.com using $25,000 out of the $30,000 in his bank account to buy the domain, going all in on his business idea, and this bet really paid off because today shadi.com has helped more than 7 million people find their life partners. Now, a lot of people know Anupam Mittal today for his role as a shark on Shark Tank India, but this next founder is an even more prolific investor. In fact, he's one of the most active angels in the entire country, Kunal Shah. As an entrepreneur, Kunal is the man behind free charge and now cred but when he was younger he actually started working at the age of 15 as a data entry operator after his father's pharma business failed dad had a pharma business startup which did not do well so i i actually took up a job uh, from the age 15, 14 or 15 to pay for my uh, school college uh, uh, because the family was going through extreme uh, situations what was the first uh, job you took 
I, I actually took a job of a data entry operator. So. And he's done pretty much everything under the sun when it comes to small business hustles, like for example, selling Mindy cones or pirated CDs to make money. And since he couldn't afford to use the internet, he picked up a part-time job teaching internet just so that he could use it for free and even taught himself programming in the process. After finishing school, Kunal decided to study philosophy because it was the only course that allowed him to work full time and still continue his education. By 2000, Kunal had managed to get a job as a programmer at TIS International. And within a couple of years, he ended up heading business at that company. But Kunal had bigger ambitions. And so in 2010, he started Free Charge, which was a company that ended up selling for a massive $400 million to Snapdeal in 2015. And by selling his company, Kunal had achieved one of his major life goals, which was never working for money ever again. But he couldn't shake the entrepreneurship bug that his father had passed down to him all of those years ago. And so he started Cred in 2018 with the vision of building a community of creditworthy individuals. Next up, we have a founder that is personally inspiring to me as someone who makes content about Indian startups, and that's Shraddha Sharma, the founder and CEO of Your Story. So Shraddha came from Bihar to Delhi in a train without a ticket to pursue her studies at St. Stephen's College because she naively thought that people who study there become rich and successful. But that didn't happen to her, at least not right away. While working at Times of India and CNBC, she realized that the media was only willing to write about people who had already become successful and wasn't interested in covering stories of up-and-coming entrepreneurs with huge ambitions. And so, while working at CNBC TV in 2008, she decided to start a blog to let entrepreneurs tell their own stories. And remember too that she was doing this at a time when most people in India had no clue what a startup even was. But in spite of this, in 2009, she decided to turn her little blog into a proper company, Your Story, using her own money. Today, Your Story is a pioneer in the Indian startup media space, having covered the stories of over 150,000 startups and entrepreneurs, reaching 10 million people every single month. And they also host one of the country's most popular startup events, TechSparks. Next up, we have a founder who never actually wanted to be an entrepreneur, but now he's the founder and CEO of Lenskart, Beush Bansal. Instead, he was pretty happy being a typical Indian kid. He went and did his engineering and then got his dream job at Microsoft, but eventually he realized that with Microsoft, he was only marginally improving the experience for users who were already having a pretty great experience, but he wanted to do something bigger. And so with no idea of what to do, he decided to quit his job at Microsoft in 2007 and moved back home. After spending months turning his parents' garage into an office, he started Search My Campus, a classified site for students to find accommodation, books, and internship opportunities. With time, his business scaled at two crore rupees in revenue and was thriving, but Piyush felt like he still hadn't found the big idea that he was searching for. That is, not until he found out that India is the blindness capital of the world. After diving into the problem, he decided to wrap up his lucrative classifieds business and started Lenscard in 2010 with a vision of making eyewear accessible to the Indian population. And today, Lenscard is Asia's biggest eyewear retailer, helping more than 40 million customers see properly. All right, the next entrepreneur on this list has seen many ups and downs in his life, just like his company, 197. That's right, I'm talking about Vijay Shikhar Sharma, the founder of Paytm. So Vijay grew up in a small town called Aligarh in Uttar Pradesh, and he was a pretty smart kid. In fact, he was just 15 years old when he went to the Delhi College of Engineering to pursue electrical engineering. But his Hindi medium education proved to be a drawback in college where everything was taught in English. And so he went from a school topper to failing in college, but he didn't give up. He didn't just teach himself English using newspapers, but actually taught himself how to code too. By 1997, in the first year of his college, he had built an online business called IndiaSite.net, which he sold to a US-based company for $1 million in 1999. But a million dollars just wasn't enough for Vijay. And so he used that money to build another online business, 197 Communications, in 2000, the company that led to the birth of fintech giant Paytm in 2010. Okay, so the next founder that I want to talk about is the only one on this list in the Web3 space. He's the founder of Polygon, Jainti Kanani. So Jainti grew up in Ahmedabad as the son of a diamond factory worker. And when he got a job at Persistent Systems in 2011, he was making just 6,000 rupees per month. But his goal was to pay off the debt that his father had taken for his education and his sister's marriage. And at that time in his life, he had no idea about startups or cryptocurrencies. In fact, he was first introduced to the concept of crypto in 2015 when he was trying to integrate a payment solution for his Game of Thrones themed betting game where players could bet on which character would die in the show next to make money. But in the process of building out this game, he got so obsessed with the potential of cryptocurrencies that he decided to quit his job in 2017 and started freelancing in the space. And that's around the time 
that he discovered the problem of congestion on the Ethereum network. And so he decided to create his own side project to solve this problem. He called this project Matic Network, now Polygon. And today Polygon is the biggest crypto project to originate out of India. All right, next up, we have a founder that I've personally had the privilege of spending time with, Anupav Dube, the founder of Chai Sutabar. So Anupav is from a small city in Madhya Pradesh called Rewa, but he later shifted to Indoor and he failed to clear his CAD and CA exams. His parents wanted him to prepare for the UPSC exam too. And so he went to Delhi for preparation, but one day out of the blue, he gets a call from his school friend, Anand, who was asking him to come to Indoor to start a business. And Anupav didn't really think that he had a shot at clearing his UPSC exams. And so without thinking twice, he packed his bags, did not tell his parents and moved back to Indoor to start this business. He invested all of his savings to start Chai Sutabar in 2016. And after failing at so many other things in his life, he really had nothing left to lose. Today, Chai Sutabar is a global brand with more than 500 outlets across India and a couple of other countries. And they've done 150 crore rupees in revenue over the lifespan of the company. And by the way, if you want to hear Anupav's entire story shared for the first time in English, then check out the podcast that I did with him up here. But now let's move on to the last founder in this list, the GOAT. When it comes to Indian startups, he started a profitable bootstrap giant. I don't even know if unicorn is the right word because it's probably a decacorn at this point, Sridhar Vembu, the founder and CEO of Zoho. So growing up, Sridhar never really imagined that he'd become an entrepreneur. Instead, he thought he'd become a professor. He pursued a PhD in electrical engineering from Princeton before he started working for Qualcomm in 1994 in San Diego. He saw the rapid growth of Silicon Valley happening in the United States, but most of the talent working at Qualcomm was actually from India. And so he wondered why there was no global technology company based in India. And so he decided to build one himself. He knew that it wasn't going to be easy and that it would take a long time, but he was committed. And so in 1996, Sridhar Vembu started AdventNet by selling niche networking software. The idea behind his business was pretty simple. Find a niche market which was large enough to make money in, but not so large that it would be lucrative for a tech giant that would compete with him. And he was able to use the money made from this niche networking software to invest in R&D to fund his more ambitious projects. In 2009, Sridhar had renamed AdventNet to Zoho, and they started building a much larger portfolio of SaaS-based products. Recently, Zoho became the first Indian bootstrap SaaS company to serve more than 100 million users across the globe, and it's been a massive, massive success. Now, obviously, India is a massive country, and there are tons of inspiring entrepreneurs here that we just weren't able to include in this video. So let me know in a comment down below which Indian entrepreneur, which Indian startup founder has inspired you the most. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.